place to catch up with friends, relax in a friendly atmosphere and enjoy great service and food. Then Buckley's can offer a fun evening that the whole family can enjoy. In our bistro you can enjoy a selection from our extensive menu including family favourites. On those sunny days our alfresco is the perfect setting to enjoy a meal catch up with friends or watch your favourite sport on two large plasma TVs. Having a special occasion can be made easy by hiring our newly renovated function rooms. Buckley's, a venue of class that provides all your entertainment and function needs. And welcome back. And of course, uh, we've got Dale's under 18 segments once again. And of course, things holding up in the finals there, Dale. So, uh, by the way, is Gooby and Noodle, the Doodle, are they in the... Finals this year? No, Doodle uh, oh. missed out the last couple of weeks. He had a uh, broken oh. jaw. Or he's got a yeah, so he's not doing too well. But Groovy will be playing there on Saturday, mm. on Sunday, actually. So the group step. The group step. Yes, he actually was named in their senior side as well on Saturday. So cool. he uh, had a bit of experience there. But on Saturday, Cryo went. Uh, Winverley went out to Cryo, and Cryo finished the season pretty well. 15-14, 104 to defeat the Inverley side. Five six thirty six. Taylor kicked four. Cullen, Scott, Shelley, Hunter, and White two. Better players, Groovy, oh, Cullen and Loon Garcia. And for Inverley, McConaughey with three. Their better players, Muir, Brackley and Taksuk. I've got to speak to Zach about that and uh, get him to speak on what his name really is and then we'll get him right for next year for sure. So but it's East not, Geelong, it's not Tatsuk? Uh, I think it is. That's where, oh, fair enough. That's where I'm going anyway. East Geelong, <laughs> they finished their season and will finish in second position. They defeated Bell Post Hill and uh, the result here, probably 6 8 44 to defeat Bell Post Hill, 5-9-39. As I said, Belpo still season probably just started a bit too late for them. But goals for East Geelong. Bowman was their main goal kicker with three. Better players, Bowman, Kingsley and Gayen. And for the Belpo still side, Reid, he got two. Better players, Mowat, McAuliffe and Symes. Winchelsea won their first game of the season. And uh, that was a tremendous effort. They kicked 14-9-93 to defeat the Belmont Lions, 13-4-82. Swanson and Linky both with four and Palakis with uh, two. And their better players, Carroll, Marnie and Highland. And uh, Belmont Lions obviously didn't supply their better players or goal kickers, so they're probably a little bit disappointed in the result. Bannockburn with a win on the weekend by two points over Werribee. Sees them going to the top five. And Bannockburn 8-3-51 defeated Werribee 7-7-49. Bannockburn goal kickers was uh, Mitchell Kent with four. And better players, Kent, Brogdon and Bath. And for the Werribee side, Mithow kicked two and five other individual goal kickers. Better players, Hamilton. Jay Camilleri and Jay Williams. Final game, North Geelong finished their season strongly and thank God for us they did because we needed them to win for us to get in. Cool. They kicked 24-8, 152 to defeat Thompson, 3-2-20. Goal kickers, King will 7. If he had got that 21 registered from the week before, I think he would nearly have had 100. So that's a pretty good effort for a uh, under-18 footballer to kick that many goals in a season. Parker got 5, Kenyon and Eels 3, Short and Marshall C2. Better players, Riccardi, Perry and Eels. And for the Thompson Tigers, Clark, I believe, got two. And Quinn, their other goal kicker. Better players, McFarlane, Woodow, Woolard, sorry, and Rockow. So on Saturday, we will have a uh, the elimination final. Sorry, Sunday, the elimination final is between Corio and Bannockburn. And on Saturday, the quali- qualifying final between East Geelong and Werribee. And Dick, your North Geelong Magpies can just sit back and uh, take an easy passage through to the finals. Bit of bad luck, actually, because we could have had home ground advantage if we'd have played out there this weekend. Wouldn't but... matter where they play, mate. I can tell Is you that. Is that good? Now. Yeah, well, I think they're probably the far, and what I've seen there, the far better side. Werribee mm-hmm. last week or two weeks ago had them four goals up at three quarter time. Werribee were four goals up, but I think North kicked five, nine in the last quarter with that breeze. But cool. uh, I think it's going to take a really good side to knock North Geelong off this year. Thank good on you, Dale. <laughs> Good on you. No, we're coping. No, no, we we're coping. We've got to get there first. We've got to no. work our way up the ladder from here. But it's uh, everyone's on equal ground at the present time. We've just got to keep winning. Under 18's great footy. And, of course, that's on this afternoon out at Osborne Park or this morning as we speak just about. Now, we've got one of the great legends in local footy in with us this morning, courtesy of Grace McKellar. They got him out of bed early, got him dressed, got the courtesy bus out there. They did a great job dressing him up. He's got his coat on. He's got his uh, Boer War Service badge on on the one of the left-hand pocket. And, of course, I speak very fondly of my very good friend and living legend of the Bannockburn Footy Club. We celebrated his 80th birthday last weekend. Thank goodness for that because he turned 80 about four years ago and the kids get run over by trucks and falling down steps. And Billy Caldo, good morning. Good morning, Dick. Absolutely. There's the biggest build-up you've ever had, Bill. Now, I was expecting a bigger good morning. But that's OK. How you been, mate? Now, listen, tell me all about the big day you had at Bannockburn last week. I was privileged to be there. You had your lovely family there, the couple of girls there that uh, struck their fair pieces too, by the way. Jeez, I must have taken up their mother, no doubt about that. But very attractive young ladies, and your son couldn't come over from Western Australia. But 
fantastic turnout there last weekend. A great tribute to you, my friend. It was a great day, no two ways about that. Yep. And um, everybody that was there, they were all important people, every yep. one of them. Yep. You've been at, now, how long have you been at the Bunning Blue Footy Club? I know you started playing just before World War One with Neville Whitley's great-grandfather, <laughs> I know that. But you, you started off with the Stonehaven Footy Club, didn't you? So it goes back further, I guess, back in Cressy, way back to 1944. Strike. 65 years this year, Dick. Is it a bit of a worry to you that every side you've played for has disbanded and <laughs> many, <laughs> many players are still kicking along, thank goodness for that. Now, tell me, with uh, the Start Having Footy Club, we all know where that is on the, I think it's the Inverlee Road, isn't it, on the right-hand side there, you see the pine trees and in there's an old hall and a tennis court and unfortunately no more footy club anymore. That's right. Now, you did play some of your junior footy, you told me, with the North Geelong Magpies, is that right? I uh, only played practice matches, Dick. Oh, that's good enough for me. That's good enough. Don't <laughs> worry about that. You're a, you're a magpie deep down, <laughs> Billy. We know all about that. So w when was that? Tell me when that was. That's a very long time ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 1942 and 1943. Strike a lot. That would never Whitley's 21st birthday. That would have been <laughs> unbelievable. That's a long time ago. So, and when you played there, any of the people that obviously we know in local footy would have played in those those days that are still about today? Uh, oh, there would be so, there still would be a lot yep. around, but uh, I don't have a great lot of contact with those people. Uh, well, most of them are around probably Eastern Cemetery, I suppose, aren't they? So you probably wouldn't say too much to them. Uh, was that your joke, Bill? Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, now, Dale, you, you're a Bannington man, and uh, obviously the Bannington Footy Club hold this guy up in great esteem. Oh, look, they do, and it's uh, tremendous to see him come across. And uh, since I've been there, I've been there, I coached seniors for a couple of seasons, and then uh, I've taken up the under-18s. And Billy's the type of bloke that still goes and stands on the gate before the uh, main game starts. And if I asked him to do anything or anyone else around the club asked him to do anything to help out, he's more than happy. So, uh, as I said, it's probably uh, getting to a stage now where you get these older blokes that are now uh, probably not getting past their time, but do deserve to sit mm. back and watch a game of football and uh, some of the younger people around the place need to step in and take over. So, as I said, between him, there's some other good people out at Bannockburn and uh, once they do decide to f not give it away but uh, not have their part in it, the younger people have to stand up and that leaves a big hole for people to fill. So, I reckon it's tremendous that Blake like Billy can still do what he does. Exactly. And Billy out at uh, Bannockburn last Saturday, a great mate of yours out there, great to see him. And there's a wonderful thing about this bloke, he barracks for Collingwood, the great Laurie Davies, and uh, every time I go out there, people tell me what a great bloke he is, and we already know that, but what a great footballer he was as well. Was he ever? Yep. I, uh, I thought I could get a kick, but I played against Laurie one day. Yep. He never gave me one solitary kick. In fact, Laurie had forgotten more than I'd ever learned. Is that right? And so he is. Yep. And another little story you tell very quickly, that Denise Giles, who of course is one of the great hard workers of GDFL footy, in particular the Bannockman Footy Club, she was your next door neighbour. Is that right? Um, she wasn't. Her husband was. Her husband was. Okay, yes. yep. And you got them out to Bannockburn and uh, the rest is history. They've just been great, loyal contributors at the Bannockburn Footy Club over many years. Oh, yes, yes. No, you've done well, Bill. And look, there was, it was a great afternoon out there. And uh, when you were president at Bannockburn, I know when I was president at North Geelong before, we both got a kick up the backside and they got rid of us. But when were you president at Bannockburn? Um, I think it was, not, it was 1980 to about... It was 17 years anyway, 1983, yep. I think, till... Uh, to about 2000. 2000. Gee whiz, Bill, that's a great effort, though. Fantastic. Well, all the best, mate, and uh, I say it sincerely, and I know that we have a bit of a gag with you, but you do actually say to me before we go on air, make sure you're hanging on me today, Dick, because I've got to say that, because people say, gee, you're a bit rough on Billy today. <laughs> but I, he tells me every week, folks, I've got to hang it on him, so I do, but I sincerely say this, that you're a great and dear friend of mine and a great and dear friend to everybody associated in local football, and people like you is what makes our great game so great that it is. And, uh, Bill, I wish you not only a happy birthday, good luck to the Bannockburn Footy Club in the finals, and I hope to have you around in footy for many, many more years to come, my friend. Thanks, Billy. Thank you, Nick. Billy Caldo, the absolute living legend of the Bannockburn Footy Club, our special guest on the footy show this morning. Well, we'll be back after this, and uh, we'll be talking about all the action on this afternoon. Back after this.